Hello there, right. Something as a request from uh, Chris on Twitter. He wants to use an L298N motor controller, this thing here, with a micro bit, this thing here. So, done a very quick mock up of what can be done. And as you can see, I've got batteries here powering the L298N because it needs an external power source. The micro bit is connected to the computer and I've loaded some code which you can see here. So when button A is pressed, pin 0, pin 1, go off and on, wait for 2 seconds, then turn those pins off. Basically it forces the motor to spin in one direction. So if I press the A button now, you see that spin round. No expense was spent on the uh, rigging for this, it's a 9 volt battery hold it in place and blue tack. And that's one of those uh, jewellery things from Poundland that has a resistor built in, strangely. So, here is it working, as you can see. It spins for two seconds. And we've proven that this can torque some micro bit and be controlled. So let's have a look at the circuit. So there's our micro bit. There's our battery box. There's the L298N motor controller, and there's a DC motor. So, the micro bit connects in three ways to the L298N. It connects ground to ground on the L298N, which in turn also connects to ground of the batteries, creating a common ground. The micro bit connects pin 0 to input 1 on the L298N and pin 1 of the micro bit connects to input 2. The batteries connect to the L298N, the ground connection, the black wire, and the red wire is going to the 12 volt terminal. That's the power in terminal on an L298N. The power out terminal is here, 5 volts. So if you've got a 5 volt compliant microcontroller, you can use that. But for the micro bit, I wouldn't suggest it because it's really 3 volts. So don't do that. And on one of the terminals, in this case I've got outputs 1 and 2, which corresponds to inputs 1 and 2 here, connected to the DC motor. So when I press A, those two pins change state, which changes the state of those input pins. The L298 goes, all oh, right. And you turn the motor on, and it turns those output pins that correspond to the input on. And we get to see the headless thing spin round and do weird stuff. So there we go. I'm going to write a blog post on this so you can uh, get a, a more detailed understanding of what's going on because I'm not too good on camera. Anyway, cheers.